Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and today I'm excited to announce a brand new addition to the Longevity family, the 160SX. The 160SX is dual voltage, both 110 and 220. Comes with this simple pigtail that all you do is plug the 220 outlet that comes pre-wired now you have a 110 machine and it automatically sets inside. Here's the brand new regulator that's supplied with this machine. If you notice it's actually the black on the outside is in liters per minute and the red inside ring is done in cubic feet per hour. So no conversion ne necessary on this unit. Uh, simple regulator. For the ground we're supplied with a very nice ground, very nice spring tension that will clamp to our workpiece or to our table. And then for the ground installing on the machine you'll just simply insert, give it a twist and lock her down. Hooking up with the TIG torch is super simple. We'll just take this, install it in here and we'll take a 19 millimeter and just kind of give it a nice torque down. Now you will notice that out of the TIG hookup we have a cannon plug that we can hook up to the panel if we're going to use the torch trigger on the torch. Uh, myself, I'm a foot pedal guy, so we will opt for the foot pedal in this installation. Here's the WP-17 air-cooled torch. Uh, first thing I noticed with this torch is, wow, this thing is very small. Um, holds well in your hand. Um, we do have a torch trigger on it. It's not a rheostat, it's basically an on-off, so you will have to set uh, what you want in amps up on the panel and work with it that way. If you choose to use that, um, like I've said before, I'm a foot pedal guy and uh, choose to work with it. Um, let's go through and build the torch. Basically, Longevity supplies you with all of this here. You have three different uh, collets, one collet body, and three cups and they give you a long and a short with this so you can uh, play with the different size tungsten uh, lengths. Uh, first thing we'll do to build the torch is we'll put in the collet body and here again that just screws in. Then you can drop your collet down through the top and I've tested all of the different tungstens with this uh, unit and I've found that the blue tip, the 2% lanthanated, basically holds up the best on the aluminum side and works extremely well on the steel side. Um, I will say that uh, 332nd in size covers just about everything that uh, I would do with the machine. So if you're looking to buy one tungsten for both AC, DC, and a weld different thickness metals, probably 332nd, 2% lanthanated would be a, a good choice to go with. Uh, next down from that would be the 2% seriated. Uh, seemed to work very well, but I did have a little bit better characteristics with uh, holding a tip on the AC side. Uh, keeping a very tight arc uh, with the 2% lanthanated. And here again, it just barely beat it out. It was like, you know, 99% to 98%. So this just basically drops down through, and then you'll put on your, your top and that down. And I was doing some tight work, so I used a number five cup. And that's basically how it goes uh, goes together. We'll get a little stick out. I usually run about it somewhere around a quarter inch or so. And that's basically the torch with this unit. And here's a shot of our foot pedal. And when we do hook the foot pedal into the unit, this now becomes our amperage control. And first time ever, we do actually have a little scale on this that tells you how many amps that you're actually dialing in. Foot pedal is really nice, very progressive, uh, very positive feel to it. Uh, metal unit, uh, real nice, should last a long time. Here's our stinger for doing some stick welding. It's very nice, it's got real good spring tension, and basically you can lay out how you want to put your rod in it, what your preferred method is for that. Simply hooking it up to the machine is the same way the ground goes in. And what I do like about this machine is everything is very well labeled on the unit. As you can see, the stick slot, basically I would remove the TIG torch and the two leads for the foot pedal. 
and you'll just stick this in, give it a twist and lock her down and you're good to go. You'd be ready to stick weld now. Machine panel is super simple. Amps, here again, we're going to use this rheostat only if we have the torch trigger hooked up. Otherwise, the rheostat is adjusted on your foot pedal for your amperage. Uh, we have something new that I haven't seen before. Uh, it's clearance effect. And basically what this does is it either puts a little bit more heat into the material, uh, less focus on the arc, or puts more heat into the tungsten. Um, I've played with this on the steel from negative 5 to positive 5. Uh, keep in mind when any time I set anything up, I always set things up at zero. I weld with it and see what I think. And then I'll do another weld with it on negative 5 and another one on positive 5 to basically kind of start fine tuning the results that I'm looking for. And what I've found uh, on aluminum, I'm usually somewhere around 2.5 to 3. Um, it gives me the best weld. Uh, doesn't seem to come into a ton of play uh, when I'm messing with the, uh, the steel. Um, but that's just your uh, clearance effect. It kind of works almost as like an AC balance and an artificial way to kind of tune in your frequency. Uh, this is an inverter machine. Uh, basically we have a TIG and a stick mode. Uh, we have AC and a DC on a rocker switch. And then we have a foot pedal and a panel control switch. Um, other than that, the things to uh, be concerned with is we have uh, pre-flow, which is intense. Um, I have right now set it uh, two tenths for uh, seconds. Uh, that's just enough to get a little bit of argon down to the workpiece before uh, I initiate the arc and it automatically does that for you. And then post flow, we are using an air cooled torch with this. So depending on how long you're using and how hot things are getting, you know, um, I tend to burn around three seconds of post flow uh, for everything. But if it's a long weld or long job, you know, you might want to max that out to eight seconds, not only to cool the material, but to help cool the torch at the end. Uh, that's pretty much it for um, the machine. We'll turn it on once again. Let you see what it looks like uh, all set up. We have a power and we do have an overheat light when we've exceeded the, uh, the duty cycle. It'll let you know and uh, shut you down until uh, everything cools down. Here I am lighting up on some 1010 hot rolled steel. It's 125 thousandths. Uh, this machine's pretty much common to industry standard, so I have about 125 amps dialed in. Usually it's one amp per thousandth of metal thickness. Um, things laying down a really clean, smooth weld. Uh, just get your rhythm and timing down, and it welds up nice and crisp. Uh, welding rod I'm using is a 1 16th ER70 S2, and I'm flowing about 12 cubic feet an hour on this. Now I've switched the machine over to the AC side. We're welding some 63 thousandths, 6061 T6 aluminum. I'm using a 4043 welding rod, 330 seconds in size. And the first thing I noticed with this is the high frequency start is just beautiful. There's not any erratic starting, anything weird going on with the arc. It's just a very nice, tight, focused, easy to use arc that allows you to lay down a very clean stack of dimes look. Uh, using the foot pedal once again, and as I'm coming to the end of the weld, I'm starting to lift. I got a lot of heat in it. I'm lifting, and the pedal's very progressive. As I lift, then I'll let the shielding gas take over to not only cool the weld, but the torch also. So for my follow-up thoughts on the machine, it's a very simple, easy to use, economically priced TIG unit or stick machine that just about anybody can afford. Um, this machine would be an asset in anyone's hobby shop or even a professional setting. Uh, it's just a no-nonsense TIG. It just gets in, gets the job done. There's not a ton of dials to uh, figure out. Basically, uh, you know, set your, uh, your amperage and uh, post-flow, pre-flow and get to welding. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble and I'll catch you here next time.